What's up, YouTube? Part two. I'm going to jump right into it. So today I am going to be talking about bike warranties. Do you need them? Should you forget them? And a little bit about Dick Sporting Goods bike experience. So um, in this series, you know, I talked a little bit about it in the first one, the first part of the series. I'm just talking about being new to mountain biking, what I experienced, sharing the experiences with you to help you make informed decisions when buying bikes what to do, what not to do, what tips and hints that I can give, and just kind of give you some inf informative information to help you make a sound decision on which route you want to go if you're new to the sport. So um, today I want to talk about bike warranties and should you buy extended bike warranties. Um, just a quick simple answer to that would be yes and no. It just depends on what you're looking for, what your expertise is, what your knowledge of bike warranties are, or, or, or knowledge of mountain bikes period and what the actual warranty includes so I'm just going to give you an example right so Dick Sporting Goods and that's the second topic I'm going to talk about in this in this second part is Dick Sporting Goods because a lot of my bikes came from there um, within the last year as well so Dick Sporting Goods has an extended warranty program where you get a three-year warranty depending on the cost of the bike it can range from I think 50 bucks up to like almost 80 bucks and so um, for all the bikes that I bought from there I ended up buying an extended warranty for each one of them um, looking back at it now I went right back and took every single one of them off and got my money back except for one they couldn't do uh, for whatever reason um, no, I'm sorry. It's not that I wanted to take that one back. I kept it for the Nashiki, Colorado. I tried to take it back, but they wouldn't let me. But all the other ones, I, I went in and, and got my money back for the extended warranties. The manager said that you can do that as long as they haven't kicked in yet. So if you bought a bike from Dick's and you have an extended warranty, and it's still going to be up to the manager of the store. That's one thing about Dick's Sporting Goods. Everything is up to the manager's discretion. It doesn't matter what the rules are. The manager has every right to say no to returns, no to um, giving you store credit, no to making an exchange or whatever the case may be. Um, they can do any of that. So just be mindful of that. Um, if you buy from Dick Sporting Goods, that it can totally change depending on the manager of that store. So with that being said, um, I just wanted to you know inform you guys of that before you buy your bikes there. Here's the thing. If you don't know much about mountain bikes, you don't know how to, let's say, lube your own chain, change pedals. Um, if you don't know how to do basic maintenance of degreasing and, and tune-ups and changing tires or putting air in tires. If you don't know anything about mountain bikes or bikes in general, then yes, you need that warranty. There's no doubt about it. If you know the basics, then no, I would say you don't need the warranty. And here's the reason why. I'm just going to give you an example Let's take my Colorado, for example, right? So the crank arms broke, the bottom bracket was making weird noises, it needed to be repaired. I did the research, other people had the same issue with it, it's just a faulty, cheap component, okay? I'm thinking, my pedal broke off while I'm riding, right? I'm thinking Dix is gonna go out there, recognize the problem, um, and then be like, hey, you know, we're gonna get you a new one not knowing that the only thing that that warranty will cover is the exact same part that was cheap and broke off in the first place. Why would I want that same defective item put back on my bike? It wouldn't make sense. So I'm not saying I expected him to go out and buy, you know, um, a $500 crank arm or crank set or, you know, I, I, I just thought that maybe they would do some type of upgrade and not get the same component, but that's not the case. So my thing is, is if you get that warranty just for parts that break or are cheap, they're just going to replace it with the same cheap part in the first place. So my thing is, why pay for the warranty to cover your cheap components when you can just upgrade the component once it wears out? That's just my opinion. That's what I would do. So it just depends on that. If you think you need it because of the tune-ups and all of that then get it but if you know basic knowledge about how to take care of a bike you don't really need it because the thing is is they're not going to be there for you when it comes to these parts breaking um, that the cheap components you know consist of anyway and so with that being said um, just keep those things in mind when it comes to the warranty 
Now, all bikes have a 12-month manufacturer's warranty, and that should cover you for the most part because the cheap parts on it, if they're gonna break, normally you're gonna break within that first year. And so I would just stick with the 12-month warranty and don't even worry about the three year because at that point you're gonna to wanna to replace those cheap parts anyway. So um, that's that's kind of like the bike warranty thing and other stores have bike warranties as well but they're a lot more expensive. If you're paying over $100 for extended bike warranty, I would kind of take a look at that, really read the fine print. Um, if your warranty does cover upgraded parts, like for example, if, if your warranty says, hey, if something on this breaks, you know, will replace it with a with a, a high performance part or a better part or whatever then definitely buy that but i don't know too many warranties that are going to do that so the warranties are kind of up in the air but i kind of give them a side eye questionable depending on what their intention is and and what the cost is and what your knowledge of a bike is so i'm kind of up in the air about that now here's the more interesting thing i want to talk about dick sporting goods because I've been in and out of those stores so many times purchasing bikes and exchanging bikes and upgrading bikes and all of that and getting my bikes worked on as well. Here's the thing. I have the best Dick's Sporting Goods store that I've ever been to. It is here in Orlando by the Mall of Millennia. They have been great. The mechanic mechanic's name is Norm. He's awesome. Uh, the managers there that I've interacted with have all been great, have all been reasonable and work with me on the bikes that I've bought. There's also um, another Dick Sporting Goods I wanna shout out in Raleigh, North Carolina. I think it's Town Center Mall or Town Center Shopping Center or something like that. That manager was really cool and really looked out for me on a couple of things there. That's two that I've just shouted out, right? Out of my experience, I probably have experience with about, hmm, at least maybe 10, 12 other Dick Sporting Goods stores, all of them have been horrible. And this is the reason why. Every Dick store has a manager that makes decisions about everything, whether you do a return, whether they can help you service, or whether you can do an exchange, or whether the warranty covers this, or some of them are really super cool, and some of them are complete. I'm not even gonna say the words, a lot of kids around right now, but, um, a lot of them can be very, um, they, they can be a-holes. Sorry about that, guys. I had to just cut the camera. My neighbors, man, they got dogs running all around with no leashes on. Like, I don't understand. Then they all in people's yards and not even trying to get the dogs. I don't understand. Whatever, man. But anyway, back to Dick Sporting Goods. So there are some cool stores. There are some stores that are complete. Like, I hate even talking walking in there because already like I already know how the managers are they act like you know um, everything has to be black and white but I know for a fact because I know people that work at Dick's it is up to the discretion of the manager to do anything that they want to do so just know that if you buy there what I would really do before you bought a bike at Dick's is get to know the manager of that store have a conversation with them first you know um, and then also get to learn the bike mechanic and ask questions about the bike mechanic at Dick's. What is their experience with bikes? How long have they been doing this? You know, um, what can they, what can and what they can't do? I remember going to one Dick's store and I saw him working on a bike and I heard him tell another guy, you know, oh, I'm not the normal mechanic. I work in the, um, in the, uh, I forgot. It was some other department in the store. It wasn't apparel, it was something else. And he was just filling in and he didn't even know what he was doing, but he was trying to put together a bike. And it was like, you know, how, why would they even allow that to happen? So you really got to be careful at some of these, these department stores. And again, Target, Walmart, stay away from Academy, stay away from REI. You should be good. Dick's, you should be good, but you just really need to make sure the mechanic knows what they're doing. Yeah. Um, so with Dick's, it's just hit or miss, just do the research first, get to know the mechanic, get to know the, the manager before you buy there. It's going to make the world a difference for you. Um, but my recommendation, again, would not even, just, I would stay away from Dick's for right now and just starting off. Again, this whole series is basically about being new to mountain biking. I would buy used before you buy anything else. Enjoy your used bike for a while, get a feel for it, see exactly how you want to upgrade or where you want to go next, and then go from there. 
not necessarily buying from a department store. And so, yeah, that's it about um, the warranties and, and Dick's Sporting Goods. If you have any comments or questions, go down below. Um, and then my last part of this series, I'm going to talk about where to go from here. Once you've gotten a bike, you've ridden it for a while, you've, you've let's say, got a year in, you're a better rider, you're, you're more knowledgeable, where do you go from this point on? Um, at this point on, we're looking at upgrading into a more expensive hardtail or going full suspension, which is on a whole nother scale. And so, but very similar to just like you starting off with a hardtail, I recommend going in light, meaning when I say light for a decent hardtail, you're going to spend 1500 to 2500 with tax. I would stay in that bracket first, then get a feel for that. And then if you want to upgrade again over a year or two, then you just you just go from there. But I wouldn't jump in head first. And I also wouldn't jump in and just buy straight out full suspension before getting used to your hardtail. And I say that because one of the biggest things that you see when you start looking at used bikes is you're going to see people selling like bikes for, you know, whether it's a couple of thousand, fifteen hundred, a thousand, all the way up to five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars. When I see people selling a brand new bike for that much money, it lets me know a couple of things. One, of course, is the bike just didn't work out for them or they changed their mind or maybe a financial burden happened. But number two, what happens more often than what you would think is people jump into this sport who have a lot of money to spend. They spend this money on a high end full suspension bike, carbon and everything. And next thing you know, the sport's not for them or they fell the first time and got hurt and was like, yeah, this ain't, I'm not doing this. Or they just don't have time to ride or they're too busy and they don't see the investment on, ret I mean, the return on the investment. And so they're just trying to dump them. And so when that happens, you don't want that to happen to you. So don't go out there and spend a whole bunch of money on a full suspension or a full carbon hardtail or full suspension bike. Um, stay within the price ranges that I mentioned before. And then upgrade as you feel like you need to upgrade. Because you'd be surprised at how many people get into the sport because it's exciting. They did it one or two times and they like it. And then they find out, yeah, it's really not for them or really they shouldn't have spent that much money or they just don't have the time to do it. And so you don't want to be one of those people either. I'd rather be trying to get rid of a $500 bike that I may shouldn't have bought rather than a $5,000 bike that I shouldn't have bought. And so just keep those things in mind when you're out here uh, looking for bikes. So, yeah, guys, that's it for part two. I'll see you on the last part. Uh, next time and again if you have any questions or comments please see below and again these are also just my opinions and from my experience so you know you guys may feel differently depending on what your experience was but I'm just trying to help you guys save money helping people who are new um, really start to think on how the best way to go about doing this is because for example right now if I were to go let's say into surfing right I don't know a lot about surfing um, let's say I wanted to buy a new surfboard. Well, I know surfboards can be expensive as well. I'm not going to go out there and buy a $3,000, $2,000 surfboard. I'm going to start off, same thing, a couple of hundred dollars, learn how to surf better, and just work my way on up. And knowing what I know now, unless I can just find one really good on sale, then I would just try to find you know a decent used one. So same type, same type scenario, situation. Anyway, I'll catch you guys on part three. Peace.